Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. My every act, my every every actions should bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Everything Lord we do and say should represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. With my heart, I will worship. With my lips, I will sing. With my life, I will serve you. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. With my heart, with my heart, I give glory. I give glory. With my lips, I will sing. With my lips, I will sing. I will sing. With my life, with my life. Serve you. I will serve you. Oh Lord, I bless your name. Oh Lord, I bless your name. With my heart, with my heart, I will worship. I will worship. With my lips, with my lips, I will sing, sing. I will sing with my life. With my life, I will serve. Lord, I bless your name. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. With my heart, with my heart, I give glory. I yes. give glory. With my lips, with I will. Lips, I'll sing. I'll sing. With my life, I'll serve with you. My life, I will serve. I will serve. Oh, Lord, I bless your name. Oh, Lord. Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. I'll bless your name. Bless your name. I will worship with my lips. I will sing with my lips. I will I sing, will sing with my life. With my life, I'll serve you. I will serve. Oh Lord, I bless your name. Oh Lord, I bless Woo. your name. With my heart, with my heart, I give the Lord. With my lips, I will I sing, will sing, sing with my life. With my life, I'll serve. I will serve. Oh Lord, I bless your name. Oh Lord, I bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name.
I bless Jesus, your name. I bless 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 your name. Jesus, I will bless you. Jesus, I will bless you. For all that is in me, I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. Jesus, I will bless you. I will bless your name. 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 Come on, come on, all over this place. Let us stand to our feet and lift those hands. Let's give God a praise. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Father, we praise your name. You've been so good to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you made ways out of no way when we should have been consumed. Father, you spared our lives. And we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to have a hallelujah praise. For the Lord brought us into another year. Somebody didn't make it over. Somebody at the last minute of 2013, their number was called, their name was called. But the Lord has allowed us to see another Sunday. The first Sunday of a new year. A year of expectancy. A year of double perfection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We certainly honor, we honor the Lord on this morning, who is the head of my life. We give honor to all of our elders and all of our ministers, to our only elect lady, Elder Fly, to our assistant pastor, Pastor Hodge, to all of the deacons, all of our visitors. Amen. And unto you, and you and especially you, the saints of the Most High God. Amen. There's some rights and some privileges that come with being called a saint of God. Is that right? American Express say never leave home without it. But I say never leave home without Jesus. I want to sing a verse or two of this old song. It's fairly easy to catch on to. I just kind of woke up with it in my spirit on this morning and I'm hoping that my voice will cooperate and if it don't you just pray 
and it'll get in line. Amen. Everybody know I'm a joyful noiser. And it's more that be like me than to be like those that were standing up singing skillfully. Amen. I feel like giving God the glory, all the glory, all the glory. I feel like giving God the glory. He has been so good to me. So good, so good. He has been so good to me. So good, so good. He has been so good to me. Oh, I feel like giving God the glory, all the glory. All the glory, I feel like giving God the glory, He has been so good to me, so good, so good, He has been so good to me, so good, so good. He has been so good to me. Woo. Hallelujah. I feel like giving God the glory. Oh, I feel like giving God the glory. He has been so good to me. So good. So good, he has been so good to me, so good, so good, he has been so good to me, Woo. hallelujah, thank you Lord, I would like to call your attention to the book of 1 Kings chapter 13 and we're going to read one verse and that is verse number 18. 1 Kings 13 and 18 and we're going to ask all to stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord reads he said unto him I am a prophet also, as thou art. And the an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee unto thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come to you. We thank you for these, thy people. We thank you, Lord, for every visitor. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for everyone that's here today. And we ask, Lord, that every need be met according to your riches and glory. Every question that's hanging out in the minds of your people will be answered in your word on today. We pray now, Father, that you may anoint this piece of clay. Lord, not according to my own thoughts or my own words, but I ask God that you may use me today, that your people may be blessed, that they may be encouraged, that they may walk in the light of thine word, Father, and give glory to you in the earth realm. And Father, we ask, Lord, that every assignment of the enemy is canceled right now. Father, that your people can walk in freedom and whatsoever they say they have. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to use for subject on this morning. Don't get distracted. Remember your assignment. 
Don't get distracted. Remember your assignment. When I begin to think about this, my mind goes back to how when a manufacturer begins to manufacture something, they do it because of a need. In their mind, they're making life better for the user. I remember the times when uh, we didn't have refrigerators and we had ice box. And the ice man would come once a week and he would bring a keg of ice. He would put it down at the bottom of the ice box and then you were able to put things in the top part and keep them cool. But somebody said, there's got to be a better way. So they came up with uh, some chemicals to cause the refrigerator to come into effect. When the refrigerator came, it was something brand new. It had a small freezer where maybe you could get a chicken or two in there and get a tray of ice. But it was something that was very small. But the people rejoiced because it got rid of the ice box. Somebody else said, well, now when we had the refrigerator, when it first came out, it was so small. You had to turn it up as far as it could go because you packed your meat along the side. And every now and then you had to defrost it. Anybody remember those days? You don't have to put your hand up. Amen. I know somebody else here other than me remember that days of defrost. Uh, you, you would get a pot of hot water and sit it in there so it could heat up so it could defrost. And then somebody else was writing and they say, well, I'm going to come up with something that is called frost free. So you never have to defrost it and we're going to make it where the, uh, uh, the evaporator, uh, that's the freezer part, the evaporator is large so they'll be able to put in not only a chicken or two, but be able to put in some hamburger and some, some other meats and some ice trays. And they never have to defrost. But there was a need to make life a little bit better. So they made the refrigerator. Man was walking. Riding a horse. Riding a donkey. And riding anything that he could ride so he wouldn't have to walk. Somebody said, well... We got to make it better for mankind. So they designed an automobile. So that man would be able to sit and stir and drive. Making life better. These things came from God. These men had an assignment. They had to pour out what they had received from God in order to make the world better. I'm here today to tell you that you also have an assignment from God. It might be a word. It might be an encouraging word for somebody. It might be a I love you. It might be a you can do it. Whatever it is, you have an assignment. So when God got ready to bless the world, he made you. It might just be your smile that when people are going through, they're able to gaze at you and get a world of encouragement and say, I can make it. The enemy would never want you to complete your assignment. Some of the assignments are great, so the war is great. Trying to discourage you from staying the course. It's important that we understand that the warfare does not belong to us. 
but it belongs to God. The battle is not mine, but the battle belongs to the Lord. I have one thing to do, and that is to complete my assignment. In order for it to be completed, I have to be broken and allow that which God has placed in me to come running out. So when the world needed an economical car, you know, I got to thinking about that, that Ford, that first one that, that hit the assembly line and, 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 and was coming off the assembly line, a brand new Model T, $700. Some of us wouldn't even need a car payment, would we? Pay the 700 <laughs> and go to driving. Now, you didn't have no heat. But you can drive nevertheless. When God gets ready to bless the earth ram, when he gets ready to bless the church, God set gifts into the church to be a blessing. I'm saying unto you today, don't get so distracted with all the other stuff that's going on around you that you forget your assignment. See, that's what the devil does. He, he puts these things in front of you, and you get focused on the wrong thing. You get focused on who don't like you. You get focused on what folk are saying about you, but none of those things should move you. Yes. Yes, it is good. If people loved you, if everybody cared for you, but you don't get 100%. I believe the word of God tells us that we should be concerned when everyone speaks good of you. But we want everybody to like us and we want, every, we want everything to go our way. And then when we get angry, we want to sit down on God. But here I'm reminded of a story. It was a prophet, a man of God, that was sent to prophesy against the altar in Bethel. And when people didn't believe that it was a word of God, the king himself doubted whether the man of God was real or not, and his hand dried up. There is a word from God concerning your situation. I don't care what you're involved in. There is a word of God that said, I'm able to bring you out. Oh, yes. I'm able to bring you out. I'm able to heal whatever is broken in your life. I'm able to do the impossible. Amen. When it seemed like it's just beyond help. God saying, that's just what I'm getting ready to do, a great thing in your life. So don't get distracted. So the Bible says that the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou will give me half thine house, I will not go with thee, neither will I eat. Bread nor drink water in this place. See, he was focused. He wasn't moved by a reward. Sometimes we are moved by physical things. We let down because we want to drive a certain model car. We want to live in a certain house. Or we just want a certain suit or a pair of shoes. And we sell out for just a little small thing. And when the devil get us focused on these things, we forget our assignment. So let me tell you how we do. Slipperage does not happen right away. It just goes a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And pretty soon you forgot your assignment. You're so busy trying to get stuff. 
I told you last week, I'd never seen anybody buried in their house. I never seen nobody going down in a funeral procession in their car, in their, in their car sitting up and to put their car in the ground because their car was their God. That's not what it's about. We, when God placed us in these bodies, we had a word from God. We have an assignment. And we have to stay focused on our assignment. It might not be so big. Your assignment might be to make sure that there's no paper down anywhere. So you go around and you pick up paper. But when you stand before the Lord, you know what he's going to say? He's going to say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. It might not be that you know a whole lot of things, but you know recipes and you know how to cook. And so you're in the kitchen and you're cooking and you're a good cook. And you cook for great men and great women of God. Amen. And sometimes you might not even get any credit for doing it. But when you stand before the Lord, he's going to say, well done. That good and faithful servant. Oh, you might not know the homeneutics and the uh, homiletics of the word of God, but you do have a testimony and you tell people everywhere you go what the Lord has done for you. And you tell them that God loves you, them and that God is concerned about them. And that might be your whole message. God loves you. And you might think it's just a small thing and that you're not doing anything. But the Bible says that one planteth and another watereth. You might be planting or you might be watering. Amen. For God to give an increase in somebody's life. The words that you speak are important to God. So when you stand before him and you say, Lord, all I did was testify. And he's going to say, that's all I wanted you to do. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. But this prophet, this prophet, he said, I'm not going to drink water. I'm not going to eat bread in this place. So he went another way and returned not by the same way that he came to Bethel. And now there was an old prophet at Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done. And all the words that he had spoken unto the king. Them he told also to their father. And their father said unto them, what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God. I'm here today to tell you that the enemy wants to steal what you have. He wants to steal your anointing. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your testimony. He wants to make you feel that the way is too hard and that you cannot do it. But the battle belongs to God. I have to say what the word says about me. I can do all things through him that strengthens me. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. Maybe I cannot do it on my own, but I can do all things through God. Whatever I'm in, whatever state I find myself, I can come out of it through God. And you can too. Let me just give you how to do it. In our tongue, is life and death. We have to speak our way out. See, sometimes we get in things and we stay in there because we keep on repeating defeat. 
We keep on rehearsing the same thing so we keep going through the same thing over and over and over again. But I heard Jesus said in Mark 11, he said, if thou believest that thou receivest when you pray, you can have whatsoever you say. So I say I'm whole. I say I'm healed. I say I'm prosperous. Because that's what the word of God says concerning me. When I look in, in, in Deuteronomy in the 28th chapter, when I look at the words that God is speaking over me, he said I'm blessed in the fields. He said I'm blessed in the city. He said I'm blessed at the gate. He never told me I was poor. He never told me that I had to can't help it. He always said that you're blessed. And if I am a son of God, if I am a child of God, my father is rich. And because my father is rich, I have an inheritance. So what are you saying? I'm saying I'm a joint heir. I'm a joint heir. And nothing happens with the inheritance without my approval. Because I'm a joint heir. So those things that God has promised to us, they're yea and amen. Somebody ain't hearing me. They say, well, why, how come I don't have no money? Because you keep on saying you didn't have no money. See, the word of God tells me that I can call those things that be not as though they were. I can call those things that be not as though they were. I can call those things that be not as though they were. I can call them into existence by the words that I say. <laughs> so you know why I can do that? Because I'm on assignment. I'm an ambassador from another government. That government uh, 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 of heaven's kingdom. I'm an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. And I represent the king of heaven. Both natural and invisible realms, I represent him. So whenever I have a challenge, I go to my constitution, which is the word of God, and find out what the constitution is saying. Because the constitution is God's desire toward us. I just wanted to throw that in. Now, we find that the enemy wants to distract you, try to turn you around. So this old prophet that should have been encouraging the young prophet now is uh, telling him, come and go with me. And the young prophet repeats what he told the king. He said, look, I was instructed by God not to drink in this place, not to stop here, not to eat bread, and go another way. And the old prophet says, well, I'm a prophet just like you. And the angel told me, let me tell you, God never changes your assignment without telling you. You don't need someone else to come and tell you that God has changed your assignment. If another person come and tell you, it should be a confirming word that you already know within your spirit that your season has shifted or your season has changed. There's some people right now 
that your season is shifted and you're restless and you, you, you can't find any, any peace because the things that you used to do, you, you're really having a hard time doing them anymore because uh, God has got your attention. But I'm here today to tell you that if God has got your attention, he has the grace to change your life. And to bring you out of whatever that you're going through. Somebody might say, well, you know, I'm having a hard time on the job. Let me tell you something. I was having a hard time on a job. I was a factory worker. Had never worked in a factory in my life. I didn't even know how to turn on the machines. But God always has somebody that would take you under your, their wing. So the guys, they, 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 they kind of took to me and they said, well, well, we're going to help you. This is how you turn the machine on and, and this is how you measure the part and this is what you do. But I didn't like it. <laughs> it was dirty. Now, I don't have nothing against dirt, but it was dirty. I couldn't get the, the grease from under my fingernails. I don't care how low I cut them at the end of the day, they were still dirty. And I said, Lord, there's got to be a better way. And I went to the board one day, and it was a, a job for human resources. I didn't know nothing about human resources either. But I figured it had to be better than this. So I applied, and I wrote my resume. And to my surprise and delight, they called me. There were several of us. But I'm telling you, God said, I will give you your heart's desire. Didn't he say that? Didn't he say that? He said, I will give you the desires of your heart. I said, Lord, I want this job. I didn't like second shift because I couldn't go to church. I said, Lord, I need a first shift job. So the Lord blessed me with the job. And not only did he bless me with the job. I didn't know nothing about human resources, so the company said, we'll send you to school. Not only would you, we'll give you a job that you don't know what to do, <laughs> but we'll send you to school and teach you what to do. How many know that's favor? They said you had to have a college degree in human resources. But I didn't have a college degree in human resources. All I had was a desire in my God. So after a while, they began to cut, to cut jobs and down, downsize. And my job got downsized. So the vice president came to me and he said, we, we're going to have to lay you off. And I said, okay. I wasn't angry. I didn't ask to go back out in the plant. <laughs> and he said, and we're going to pay you until you find another job. So he said, your job is to find another job and we'll pay you every week your same salary until you find another job how many can say that's favor oh yeah this old prophet convinced this young prophet that God had changed his assignment I'm saying to you and you and especially you, do not get distracted. Because your blessing is about to come. And you're getting all upset about what you're going through right now. I wonder if you can turn to somebody and tell them it's a temporary situation. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. It's a temporary situation. Whatever God said he will do, he will do. Whatever God said he was going to do, he will do. 
for he's a God that cannot lie. Lying is not a part of his makeup. It's something that he just cannot do. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread and drink no water here, nor turn again to go the way that thou comest. Or camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art. And the angel spake to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thy house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass that as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Now, all this other time, he was lying. But God can use anybody. If God can use a rooster, if God can use a donkey, he can use anybody. Stop letting the devil tell you that you cannot be used by God. For you are a child of the Most High. Let me just tell you this. There was another prophet by the name of Elijah. Elijah got angry with the people because of them making false gods and putting them in groves and having statues of false gods and all of this. And Elijah just got tired of it. And he declared that it wasn't going to rain for three and a half years. He declared it. God didn't tell him to say it. God didn't tell him to prophesy it. He declared it. But God heard what he said, and God said, hold up a minute. That's my son that's declaring this thing. And he spoke to the elements, and he told them, you cannot reign. Why? Because it was spoken of by my servant. If we are servants of God, God will hear our words. He hear our words. So I, I tell myself, self, you are blessed and highly favored of God. So you know what I do? I walk like a blessed man and highly favored. I ain't going to get on the football game, but I'm going to tell you this one thing. Winners walk a certain way. Is that right, Brother Rick? <laughs> Winners have a swagger about them. Losers make excuses. And they always talk about next year. But winners ain't interested in next year. They're going to take care of business this year. Right here and right now. See, and because we're servants of God. When the enemy comes and he tries to turn you back, you don't have to run from him. You can speak the word because the word holds weight. So he told him, he was sitting there eating. And all of a sudden, this lying prophet, I don't know if he got the Holy Ghost right then. <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. But I know one thing, that the Lord began to speak through him. And it said, it came to pass that as he sat at this table, and that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back, and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus said the Lord, For as much as thou disobey the mouth of the Lord, Thou hast not kept the commandments which the Lord thy God commanded thee. But you came back and has eaten bread and drunk water in this place. 
of which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. He said, because you did that, your carcass, which means your body, your body will not be in the sepulcher with your fathers. You're not going to go back to your land and be buried with your fathers. But the Bible said that when he got up on uh, his ass and uh, on his way back, that a lion yes. killed him. Yes. Now that was very different in itself because the lion normally consumes what it kills. But in this case, the lion did not consume him. It just killed him and stood guard over him. And the word got back to the old prophet. And the old prophet came and buried him. Any graveyard that you go in is probably treasures in that graveyard. I'm not talking about rubies. I'm not talking about rings. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about any of those kinds of things, but it's rich because it's rich with inventions that people were discouraged to even try to do. There were businesses that should have been brought forth that they were afraid to do. I'm saying in the new year, a year of expectancy, a year of double perfection, whatever that seed is that God has placed in you, amen, you ought to be about your father's business. Somebody said, well, I'm not going to go into business because I'm afraid I'll fail. But you'll never achieve anything if you don't try. If you don't trust in God enough to step out and say, Lord, I'm going to do it. And if I fail, I fail, but I try. We as a people, we consume. We buy everything that people put out. Some things we don't have no business wearing. Uh-huh. Pastor, you going there? Uh-huh. <laughs> everything you got and everything you ever wanted is all showing. You know you don't have no business with it. Now, I'm going to use myself, and I'm almost through. I went to the store, and they have, they have a, a new, you know, before they have athletic cut and a regular cut. Now they have a, a modern cut. And a modern cut, it's not really a full pair of pants. It, it don't come, pants don't come up here. They come about right here. So you need a pair of pants and something to pull down because half of your back end is showing. Now, you know, some of us don't have no business. We ain't made like that. So we need to pass by the modern cut and get the fuller cut. Or you go get your athletic cut shirt and know your gut hanging out here. So when you can't fasten it, you get mad with the manufacturer when you should have got a full cut to begin with. Because you know you full. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now they have pants that hug you. I don't know what they made out of, spandex or something. But, but they hug you. Now, if your pants hugging you, and you... and growing, you need to get a different size. Okay? 
So maybe you're the one that God has put an invention in for that different size or that different fabric or that idea. See, because in the graveyards, I believe there could be a cure to cancer. But somebody was afraid to even talk about it because they was afraid of failure. But my God, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, and what do he do? He get back up. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. It's not a person. It's an event. And you fail at something in your life. I played football for a day. <laughs> It took me a whole two hours to realize I was too small to be out here playing football. So I quit. And I went right across the track. See, that was a failure. Because they wanted me to be a, running, a, a, a defensive back because I was fast. But them people coming at me was big. So they come passing by, I step aside. <laughs> I wasn't out there to get hurt. <laughs> So I turned in my uniform and I went across the field to the track coach <laughs> and said, I want to run cross country. <laughs> Something I could do. So I ran cross country. All I had to do was run and run and run. Was nobody chasing me? Was nobody trying to knock me out? See, that was an event. Was I a failure? No, I got a letter in cross country. But we have to find our niche. We have to find where God has placed us and begin to work in those things that God has given us. So maybe you can't sing in the choir or sing on the praise team. It's all right. Get your tambourine. And if you can't play the tambourine, clap your hands all ye gates. <laughs> Hallelujah. But don't get distracted. Stop letting people define you and tell you what you can't do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I know that there are songs that I can't sing. I can't sing them. I can't do it. They make so many changes. Sean, I'd be embarrassed, and you will too, trying to catch up with me. So I sing those songs that I can sing. Yes. Amen. Yes. And the hard songs, I look over to Steve, and I said, <laughs> need you to help me out. Yes. See, and that's knowing your limitations. If we walk in the things of God during this year, why don't you try God? Why don't you try him? Maybe, maybe for years you dreamed about going back to school. Then let this year be a, a time that you go back to school. Go back. But somebody said, well, you know, I don't want to be the oldest in class. What difference do it make? Once you get the education, can't nobody take it from you. Go back to school. Learn something. Some of us are young. Us are young. I heard somebody say on watch tonight, they turned 50 years old. And they said that truly they could say. <laughs> they said truly they could say. That they was once young, <laughs> but now they're old. <laughs> I started looking around. I said, when did 50 get old? <laughs> I didn't understand it. <laughs> God bless you. Know your assignment. Don't be afraid in this new year. Don't be afraid. Step out on the word of God. Find that scripture that you like. 
no weapon form against me shall prosper. No weapon form against me shall prosper. See, when the enemy start fighting, that's my scripture. No weapon. So I stand still. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, let me tell you, life is not the same with him as it is without him. It's not the same. See, without the Lord, I was lost, confused, didn't know which direction to go, without purpose, without direction. But when I got saved, when I gave my life to the Lord, everything began to come clear. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that every day is going to be a bed of roses and that uh, you're not going to have no trials and tribulations. But I will say that you would never be alone. No matter what you're going through, Jesus said that I will be with you. I'll be in the trouble with you. I'll help you. I'll hold you until you're made strong. I give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll give you joy in the midst of your tribulation. All you have to do is accept him. Say, Lord, I need to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want that joy that you talk about in your word. I, I want that joy. I want that peace because I don't have peace right now. You know, when you don't have no peace, you can't sleep. And if you go to sleep, you can't rest. And when you wake up in the morning, your mind is all messed up because you have no peace. But Jesus said, I will give you peace. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give it to you. Are you here this morning? All you have to do is repent of your sins. Tell the Lord that I'm sorry for the sins that I've committed, that I'm not going to walk that way anymore. That's all you have to do. Say, Lord, I want to change in my life. I want to change. I want to change in my life. I don't want to walk through 2014 the same way I did in 13. But I want to be that new creature. For the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, that he is a new creature. And that old things are passed away. And behold, all things are made new. Are you here this morning? Are you here? Are you here? No weapon form against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon. Are you here? Are you here? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'm going to ask you to stand one more time with me. Stand one more time for me. I want you to turn to your neighbor. And I want you to say, neighbor. You don't know who you are. Chosen and elected of God. Remember your assignment. Do it joyfully and do it faithfully. God bless you.